Alright, so there's one. That's kind of a looping glitch. Almost sounds like a drum machine in a way. So I'm going to mark that on my picture. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six, six points in from here. So I'm going to mark that down. Alright, one thing that can help when soldering your wires to the circuit board is to add a little bit of solder beforehand. So this is one of our bend points. So I'm going to heat that up and actually add some solder. Just so there's a little extra and when we introduce the wire it will stick. The solder connection will connect a little bit better. All right, now the speak and read is in a mode where it's just spitting out a bunch of constant noise and random letters and words. So now when we flip this switch here, it will do a repetitive glitch. And depending on where you stop it, there, like that. So it'll just repeat until you turn it off. And now it's back to its streaming out of random noises. And when we flip the switch again, it makes the repetitive glitch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start poking and prodding on the circuit board and if you're at home with your uh, project you can do the same. And I'm going to do this for a couple of minutes and basically come back after I've uh, found some more bend points and I'll show you what I've found. Alright, so uh, after poking and prodding for uh, quite a while now, I've got a few more uh, bins hooked up. As you can see, it's kind of starting to look like a little bit of a spaghetti explosion going on here. Um, just to recap, what I have now is this uh, continuous loop that's going now. I also have this uh, glitch looping switch here. I have a pitch bin hooked up to this potentiometer. You'll hear it pitch down. And then when I turn it the other way, it'll go back up. And then I have this distortion switch that's kind of cool. I hooked up a toggle switch first. So now the distortion is engaged. And as you turn the knob, Right now it actually just makes the pitch sound like it's going up, but in another mode, when uh, this is off, it actually just adds some distortion. So now we got to start looking at how we're going to mount all of these into the case. All right, the first part that I'm gonna mount on the case is the reset switch right here. Uh, when selecting a drill bit, you wanna select a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than the shaft of whatever component you're gonna mount. So this happens to be a 5 16th inch drill bit. Now back to what I said earlier about not rushing on anything. I wanna make sure that this part is going to fit where I want to drill the hole, which it will. All right, now we have our hole drilled. I'm going to feed the switch through onto this side. I'm going to put the washer and the nut on. I'm going to screw this down hand tight. All right, now it's screwed on hand tight. Now I'm going to use the crescent wrench to tighten it up just a little bit. <laughs> and it decided to turn on when we're doing that. That's okay. So I'm just going to make sure that that's pretty snug. And yeah, we don't want to over tighten it because we risk uh, 
stripping the shaft of the switch or possibly breaking the plastic. All right, so now that we've got our reset switch mounted here, I'm going to go ahead and just use some of the same methods, uh, measuring and checking twice before I drill that to make sure all of the uh, switches and knobs are going to fit where I want them. And earlier when I mentioned the needle files, it's because of this here. Uh, sometimes when you drill a hole um, in either plastic or metal, uh, you're going to get this burring effect out here and so you can use the files to file that down and get rid of it. All right, now we have all of our parts mounted to the front of the speak and read. Here is a potentiometer with a knob on it that controls the pitch. Here's another potentiometer that controls the distortion level. Also a toggle switch to turn on and off the distortion. This is our first glitch switch here that will uh, persuade it to just spit out lots of random words, letters, and noises. And then this one will loop uh, whatever point it's at, and then our reset switch here. Now before we put the back on and tidy everything up, now is a good time to test it to make sure it still works. Sometimes when you mount things, uh, you can accidentally pull a wire loose. So right now we're going to go ahead and make sure that it works. And alright, it looks like everything still works. Now tidying up the back uh, with all the wires and everything everywhere. Uh, this is almost uh, kind of like a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, I found uh, these uh, zip ties uh, work pretty good. So what I like to do is just, when I can, just go ahead and try and gather up all of the wires. And go ahead and pull that fairly snug. And so now we can maneuver all the wires where they're going to be out of the way of the back. Just going to press it down and actually that's going to be pretty good. Go ahead and snip this off and now we'll fit the back on. Alright, now we've got the back snapped on. I'm going to go get the two screws that I ended up putting on that speaker earlier. Sure enough, they're still there. And now I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. Alright, so it looks like we're done. Uh, you can always uh, modify the case if you want to. You can paint it. You can uh, even take all the insides out and put it in another housing if you wanted. Uh, the possibilities are pretty much uh, limitless. And feel free to just experiment and uh, bend as long as you want on these. Uh, basically, the more time you spend finding the bend points, the better uh, project you're going to have.